Uh, good evening and welcome to The Grey Cricketer. Um, you would have seen from the title of this of this episode, uh, episode. I don't, um, this is a uh, person I spoke today, obviously with the news of um, the passing of the King. Um, that uh, I think everyone that we heard from in the past 24 hours knew Shane Warne intimately. Either they played with him or against him or they had a relationship with him off the field. Um Personally, I don't think I think Pez. I'm right in saying for you as well. I never met him. I never had a conversation with him. I would have passed him in corridors, etc., ten or twelve times. Um, but this is the thing about Shane Warne, and that every single person who is watching this or listening to this had a relationship with Shane Warne, um, and he is one of the only players, maybe people ever in in, in our lives, especially Antipodeans, who transcended not just cricket like he he was part of our childhood he was part of who we are as australians or cricketers or um and and we were working late last night um and uh i was on instagram and i saw dave warner's post about rob marsh and shane warne and i was so confused i was like i was someone passed away in shane's family or like someone Else in Shane, I was I couldn't figure out. It was like half an hour. I was going around. I saw tweets and I was like, "Nah, this doesn't." I just couldn't believe it. And Pez, you would have been the same as me, man. Like hundreds of messages from from friends or um, family members or whatever. Uh, same thing, just disbelief. Mm. And um, wrapping our head around it, man. I, uh, that's what this is about. We're just trying to talk about it because we didn't we we didn't play with him or against him or or know him like that. But we all knew him somehow. So we're just kind of talking about trying to represent as best we can what Shane Warne meant to us anyway. Uh, so I know he was your hero, man, and um, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry if you lost, man. Oh, oh, um, I think, yeah, we've all had an urge to, to talk. I, I'm sure so many people who are listening uh, have had their phones basically blow up today uh, as people try and wrap mm. their heads around something that just feels so surreal. And that's why we're doing, you know, what we're doing. Like this will this will be raw. We don't have anything planned other than um, going through a couple of mess- beautiful messages or tributes that people have sent through and should say from the start that mm-hmm. uh, in particular the voice memos that people have sent through are um, uh, a pretty, a pretty uh, special and uh, actu- we're actually going to, put that into a just a completely different show as in we're going to make its own we're just going yeah. to give it its own show uh when i can stitch it together right. uh so um thank you to those who submitted them um you know as as for me well i, I think like from the top mate uh we've got to we to get through the right the right hierarchy uh you know he was his um families and his friends before he was any of ours and um and, and yet you know he he was so generous with however he <laughs> did his thing you know did his life that we st- we all felt like we had a piece of him he gave us that um mm. but mm. um you know I, I i feel for his family so much and his friends so much uh you know it, it feels mm. already because because of who he was and the way he, the way he you know his whole philosophy we're, we're we've already moved into tributes you know but his family and his friends I would be entitled to ask you know what's going on or that what happened and I'm sure stuff like that will mm. come out, but I, I felt like it would be, and we're not going to pass that here, but it would be respectful to acknowledge that. Um, but yeah, as for, like, we just wanted to have a bit of a raw chat. And uh, he, he, yeah, I mean, look, I just said this on a radio thing earlier, but um, like, I wrote, I wrote something early today. It was, it, it was, it was inadequate. <laughs> I was asked to write it. Um, I, I course i said yes i didn't have very long to write it um and the the task was kind of to try and reflect what he meant to all of us and i found that really difficult because when i reflected upon warn um I, I, my relationship to him him felt very personal <laughs> you know i mean he, he was my he was the reason you know for cricket for me and he always felt uh you know he just as i got older and you know you you learn like you learn about other elements of life like you know art and beauty you realize that Warren, Warren belonged in that realm he was out he was otherworldly what he what he did was on the field was uh you know I kept I kept making drawing an analogy with you know people like Mozart he used to say it all the time but it was um mm. 
uh, it it was it was true beauty and symmetry. I keep thinking about that word. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of shit like Plato would have contemplated, and and his Warren's great conundrum was that uh, he, he also smoked Benson and Hedges and um, ate baked beans, <laughs> and uh, yeah. and that and we yeah. lo- and we love we just loved him dearly for it. You know, he was just yeah. so yeah. he was so every day, and and yet so cosmic, and. And 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 we all tried to emulate it, and nobody could, and nobody will, and and that just speaks to the the sheer genius uh, of the person. And mm. I just think any chat mm. about him, like, because he just uh, he 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 transcended everything, like on the field and off, like. But but any chat about him has to start with cricket <laughs> and just how fucking good. He was at cricket. Is any you know? Is it, mm. a friend of friend of mine and ours, Tim, Tim Stewart, wrote to me today. Is, is anyone's highlights more rewatchable than Shane Warne? Is anybody more watchable mm. than Shane Warne? Uh, and mm. um, yeah, I, I feel like that's a good. It's a that's a good place to start the cricket because if you're starting, to, if you if you're getting into Shane Warne the person, well, we we didn't know him. You know, and we always speculated about him because he was so interesting. He's such an interesting figure. He was an icon. You know, we would we would we would joke about uh, he, him in the press box. You know, the great high school cafeteria where he was the alpha king. You know, people would gather around him like the T birds in Greece, and he was Danny Zuko, and they'd all take a piece of him. We all did. Some mm. of us would would sit at the table clandestine and listen in. Um, probably unethically, <laughs> and and the things you'd hear were just the, the things you'd hear never let you down. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah. didn't didn't you know? Can't say I knew him, and um, and wouldn't wouldn't want to say it. But the, the cricketer on the field, but um, you know, it's it's the best. Has any has anybody done it better? Uh, and it's so, it was so special. I um. At the top there, you're talking about, you know, the hierarchy of of the loss here, and uh, you know, we all had a piece, so we had a slice of Shane, mm. um, and obviously, first and foremost, family, mm. um, you know, three kids, a, a, an ex wife, yeah, partners, mm. whatever. Um, I was, mate, I, I was actually thinking about um, this afternoon. I was actually thinking about Michael Clark, um, mm. and he and he and Warren were great mates, obviously, and um, again, I don't, I don't know Michael Clark, but he's two best friends in cricket. I would. I would guess would have been Phil Hughes and Shane Warne, mm. and uh, I I really hope he's doing okay, man. You know, because mm. that's um that'd be a that'd be a that'd be a really hard thing to take. Um, but, but yeah, mate, the 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 person, the cricketer, it's uh, it's so intrinsically linked, isn't it? It's it, you know a lot of this today reminded me actually of when Kobe Bryant um, passed away. Mm. Um, different circumstances, obviously, but just the um. What he meant, what what Kobe meant to LA and basketball and and the United States as a whole, the the, the people that he represented, I, I feel like it was akin to that. There was there's other stuff that like Maradona, for instance, was so Maradona was so Argentinian. What he did for Argentina, my observation anyway, you know, winning the World Cup in '86 um, was such a big deal for that country and what he did to elevate the people's hopes and dreams and stuff. Shane Warne was. Shane Warne was an Australian cricketer, but man, like the 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 people that have reached out from every corner of the globe today, whether you know there are expats now living in the US or Indians, um, you know Pakistanis, Sri Lankans, obviously English and Australian people, Kiwis, you know our South African friends as well. Like it's just he was universally loved, and that is an unbelievable thing because that stems from cricket. You know, it stems from cricket. I, Warren, Warren took 40 fucking whatever wickets in 2005 Ashes and he was idolised during that series, you know, in a very tense series, you know, obviously the most famous series ever, definitely in our lifetimes, but he was loved in England. And, like, I've got messages today from people who were, you know, friends in England who, who don't even like cricket and um, they, they, they were hurt by this today. You know, it's, it's weird when a celebrity passes how it affects you and you don't think that it's going to affect you, but then Warren... One might be more an obvious one for you and I because of you know the the job that we have, I suppose. But 
man, there's a lot of people that I got messages from today who don't like cricket who were like, fuck Shane Warne, no way. You know, like it was a it was a big deal. And uh, he was he was so much bigger than just cricket. But like the way he connected all cricket lovers, I think just espoused from his love of the game and the love that he gave, which to your point, what you were saying earlier, Pez, was he gave so much of himself, you know? And so much of it was obviously you know, there was some absurdity to it and that that made us love him even more because there was so much love behind his comments fundamentally. Um, maybe not always, but but you know, there was there was a love there and we we loved him for what he gave to us. He made us so happy in so many different ways, but of course it was fuck he was a good leg spinner. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um but how how empty it feels now there's obviously there's cricket being played at the moment and and you know australia's playing india's playing it's just like man nothing feels less important which is odd because he loved the game so much you know yeah uh yeah there's uh, made that you know i don't know uh you know I'm, I'm i'm trying to think what i'm just trying to think what to um bring to this like i, I still think i still think there's mm. there's an element mm. of shock and and disbelief and um, I hope the tributes go on for a really long time, and we're all gonna just it, b- b- because he. I mean, he was an icon. He transcended everything. Like, uh, and and everybody did have a piece of him. Um, I, I still think it comes back to the sheer like uh, cosmic beauty of of his art, you know, of leg spin. And, mm. Um, mm. But um, yeah, like I, I I was really numb like hearing it this morning, and I suppose like. Um, you know, one one thought for us was like, <laughs> you know, pe- people, and and this this is this doesn't this doesn't matter. It tr- truly doesn't matter. Um, but uh, you know, people always ask who, who's you know who's your who's your white whale. Well, it, well, it was him, and and uh, like <laughs> I always, I mean, you and I talk about this all the time. It's being really honest. Like we always, I, I always treated and like we never approached him. We never asked him once you know i mean i joke all the time mm. about um <laughs> how i uh embarrass myself in front of um people to try and get them onto the show <laughs> uh completely shameless but just there was something about Warren and his place in um you know like how how he what he meant to me personally where yeah we'll cross paths and stuff like that some he wouldn't have a scooby-doo <laughs> i was but like uh and I, I just never wanted to fuck it up, you know. And I, I was like, I always had in the back of my mind, like a like a time will come, you know. I just want to. I, mm. I always felt like you needed a relationship with him. You felt like I would observe how many people wanted that piece of him in the press box, or just felt like they knew him. And sometimes you'd overhear some of his stories, and, and people have already written to us before. You know, we, we we've talked before, wondering whether he was lonely, you know, which which is just that's just idle mm. speculation of two podcast idiots, um, yeah. like it's predicated it's predicated on a recognition of how like how otherworldly you know he he was it feels weird to say he was in in past tense but like yeah um it, it all of those things led me to always feel like like i'd there needs to be a relationship i'd like oh, you know i'd love to tell him i played at st kilda you know i mean anyone who bowls leg spin is listening everyone's in the brotherhood you know if you've walked in and gone through the risk of trying to propel the ball both forwards and rotate laterally, <laughs> uh, you know the feeling of um, being able to, you know, bamboozle players far better than you, and also embarrass yourself uh, at, at like an under twelve level, in often in the same minute, and that means you're in the brotherhood. And he, I, I just always felt like he respected people in the brotherhood, so I always wondered, you know, that that might be a thing, uh, and. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, I regret it. And, but, but then I always, we always used to, we always used to talk about what would an interview with him be like, and, and, and we wouldn't be sure it would go well because it would require require some self deprecation, and you know, it wasn't really a strong suit of his. And that's probably an occupational hazard again because he was so big. You know, who could he, who could he trust? He, he seemed to keep a pretty small circle around him. You know, you'd even you'd even talk to guys who played with him, and you. You don't know if they were sort of more colleagues and associates who, again, were just in in his shadow, all giants, but he was the titan. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, I'm I'm just going through now in my head, like, well, what like what would it have looked like? So I always wanted to approach really softly, and I'm not, you know, 
and I think I was afraid of an interview with him because I, I wouldn't have known what to say because of what he meant to me. You know, like I, I, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes wouldn't be enough. How do you, what do you, how, every every question would be a waste of twenty other things you could ask him or talk about, or or maybe you just want to sit him down and just say and just tell him what he meant to you. You know, and maybe it wouldn't be funny, and that you just go, oh, I don't care. But but then again, he would say so many things that were just so ripe for investigation or comments he'd make when he was commentating. Yeah. Just there was too many. It's just there was just too much. He was just everything was so big yeah. with him, just bigger than anything you can yeah. think of. Everyone was mortal, and he was he you know he's, he is immortal now. But um, yeah, you know those things go through my head. But I regret it too. I re- I, I regret I regret not going harder. I just I just felt like a time would come later. I felt like we would we would be in a more mature place to do it and. The time might be right, but um, uh, it didn't, and you know that's that's okay. Like it, it really is okay. But I, I just thought I'd sort of share that as an insight into like mm. how, uh, mm. it, you know, how he made me feel. It was it, it, it was as close yeah. to kind of God stuff, like without being um, too like using too much silly verbiage about it. But it was as close to right. to trying to relate to a, a God as uh, as you can imagine. You know, um, you know, last night when it's fucking just like two, two, three a.m. Mm-hmm. Just trying to think about. I know a lot of people who consume our stuff as just a new way, to, a fun way to enjoy the game, and well, I think we're we're doing our best anyway to sort of fumble our way through like what this person meant to our lives, you know, because he was just so much more than cricket, and I was just sort of trying to think about like what to say mm-hmm. at three in the morning about it. Not that anyone needed anything from us or was asking for anything, but mm-hmm. um. And I was just trying to like, like how do you how do you say thank you to someone mm. posthumously mm. for everything that they did, everything they gave you in your life? Mm. You know, like one of I think my favorite worn memory um, was '99 World Cup semi um, gets Gibbs and then and then Hansi Cronier and, and that whole th- that was just mm. worn. The yeah, thank you. You know that's 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 a drop in the ocean of worn memories and and yeah, t- Tim Stewart talking about you know highlights and stuff and but like what mate, what worn gave us was was fucking Australiana. It was blonde. It was leg spin connection to the past of Benos. It was World Cups. It was winning. It was something to be proud of, mm. and it was also some larrikinism. There was mm. y- you know. Um, um, there was some absurdity, there was some hilarity, there was some cheekiness to it all. And it ma- he was something that made us proud. And and he also represented like the reason that cricket was just fun. It was so, I mean, it's, it would have been fun when you're that good at it. Oh, and your mitts are that <laughs> I big. never experienced that. What about the mitts on it? <laughs> I, never, I never experienced that myself. <laughs> uh, must be nice. Must be nice. Um, but you know, so it's, so you try and wrap these things up. And you're like, how do you How do you thank someone for what they gave you? Because he doesn't. He didn't owe me anything, you know. He was just out there, and he was just living. He was living his best life, and there's some poetry to the 52 years on Earth and how he fucking gave it everything, you know. And uh, maybe it was just inevitably he wasn't going to live 100 years or something. I don't know, but but you know, how do you, how do you thank someone for what he gave you when you don't even realize what he gave you until it's it's over? Mm. Now I think about that. The the footage that the, the Fox Cricket have showed a number of times today about his last test match he did at Hobart. He's, he's there with Vaughn at tea or, or the dinner break or whatever it's called. And the guys on the hill is like, there's probably like four or 5,000 people on the hill there just going ballistic for Vaughn. Mm. And that's what I did from just my own, um, you know, Twitter last night. I, I said this um, on, on radio just before, like I just hope he knew how much he meant to us. You know, how mu- I hope he knew how much he was loved. I, I think he, I think he probably did. I, I think he probably did, but Man, the, the the love that was there for Warren from players, from the public, all across the world. Like, I just hope he knew that and he felt that, you know, especially in those last moments, whatever he was feeling. It's just um, – because he, de- he deserved that. He, g- he gave us so much. It's part of what was very real about him, I think, mate. Like, he, he needed the love. And and and, and mm-hmm. I'm kind of kind of glad he was a bit like that because uh, it then encouraged us to give it. I, 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 it's, it is one thing, like uh, – I do think it was well understood in his lifetime that he was um, he was he was the guy, you know, he he was the icon, and uh, yeah. you know, 
it's just funny to th- already, the, you know, to see all the footage coming out and and what gets prioritised, and it's all completely understandable. It's getting ball stuff, and you talk about the World Cup, and the 05 Ashes comes up a lot. Like like on a personal level for me, it was forty wickets in the Ashes, um, in 05, and he bowled unbelievably, and it was kind of his uh, like it was, it was his sort of magnum opus, magnum I guess, opus. In, in, yeah. in England. Um, but for, for me, I, like it was an extension of everything, you know. It, it, I, I don't think he took himself mm. to a new place for that, for, for the Ashes. He just, he bowled well because that, that was the level of excellence that he brought. But there was one clip that, uh, you know, the talk about, again, extending love to somebody as well, Robelin, the two put up. But... Um, uh, of his first over in the 05 Ashes. And the thing that struck me about it was it was just another reminder and just took me back straight away of how when he would get the ball, and this is what I loved about, like, and, and anyone who bowled leg spin loved as well, is it because it was such a, a like, a, um, a, mer- a mercurial and mysterious art, um, and maybe he made it so. Uh, like, the way he, the way it, a game would change and a, and a hush would come over the crowd when Warren was introduced. It, it really was like a magician was coming. And you can imagine all of the world is around and the egos around. He, he, had a, he had a ball in his hand and everybody was in his, was, was under his spell. And like, not, not like, not just the wicket keeper who's like, okay, I better switch on, you know, Gilchrist late, Healy early, uh, all, all the bats, but like the umpires, mate, you know, like you can see in his first over, he, and the, the, you know, he'd get the ball, he'd walk to the wicket, he'd rub his hand in the deck uh, and take his time. And then I got, it got me thinking, now I can't even remember who else used to walk in and bowl. Just can you, can you imagine mm. the, the, uh, the intimidation of, of, of Warren looking at you as, as, as a striking bat walking into bowl? Like you never get that with anybody else. Like the the weight, like a fucking like a parent coming to scold you, you know, like what's going to happen, mm-hmm. and then um, mm-hmm. the power of the gather and the grunt as he releases, and the fact that like it's the hardest thing to execute, and he was actually one of the most accurate bowlers of all time. wasn't It was never even loose, and you know, he'd start talking. He'd 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 co-opt the umpire into his spell. You know, like as in, this is how I'm going to get them out. This is when I'm going to do it. it, it it's uh, it's I just keep coming back to the word uh, otherworldly. He was he was um, it was it was a cosmic thing. It was above and beyond the the mortality of everyone else around him. And I you know I'm just I was appreciative then. I'm eternally appreciative now. Uh, I. I would I even like cricket as much as I do without Shane Warren? He 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 mm. he took it to a plane that I've never seen another player take it to, uh, mm. and and then there was and then there was everything else around it, you know, like like saying that aliens built the pyramids, gold. <laughs> 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 oh my god! That's what I was going to say about <laughs> yeah, and wrapping yeah. his wrapping his mouth around his pint glass. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's all so perfect. It's all, and that that was the thing about the O five Ashes, wasn't it? And that, that, like this, this isn't. I'm not celebrating this in any way, but the the thing about the O five Ashes is that he, he was going to that with a lot of personal pressure because his marriage had just yeah. collapsed, and. There was that's all like wrapped up in the thing of like the theater of Warren, like that you t- you described so eloquently there, Pez, about him walking into bowling, like they're making a hush and fucking Alim Dar just wants to give some stuff out, like he wants to be part of it as well, mm. and he's got the sort of like the he's got the cuffed um he's got the cuffed whites um in the O five Ashes oh, and he's yeah. scoring runs and he's chirping he's chirping Collingwood at first slip and there's like all this like the Sun press. Um, you know about his marriage and stuff like that was the O five was the magnum opus in lots of ways because it was just it was all things coming together and this is a thing man like he he destroyed England so many times but they just loved him you know and, and, mm. and what is that there's something about when you look at the person you see you see some love there it's something behind the eyes mm. um uh, it, uh, it's it's ineffable uh, mm. you know um 
Mate, Sh- but- Shahid wrote in here just on that and said, you know, du- during the ebbs of test cricket when you were away from the TV, it was the distinctive bark of your brothers saying, Warney's on, you know, that would that would... You'd break mm. land speed records to return to the couch floor or window just to watch and wonder my most pure memory of cricket. I feel like I've read a lot about that today. Like, you know, nobody mm. really watches every ball of cricket. And, you know, if you do, well, have you know, okay. Um, but like... It- <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. It's a, it's a respectful day, but... Um, uh, <laughs> But but that was one thing that I've picked up a lot. He he, he was must must watch because there was something going on beyond beyond where he was pitching the ball. He he made he would he made a show to made it into a he made cricket into a show. How does anyone? How do you yeah. do that? Yeah, yeah. How do you do that? Yeah, they make, there's, there's so many messages that have come in. I really can't. Um, mm. I really can't read them all. There's a lot of people um, who and so I don't really particularly want to pick one. There's a lot of people have written. With, with with personal stories about times Shane Warne's gone out of his way to uh, to mm-hmm. be nice to them, uh, which is really and it's 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 amazing how much that stuff sticks with people, you know when um, when they do things like that, and it seems like he's he's done that to a lot of people, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people have tried to, have wanted to talk to him as well, so maybe it kind of <laughs> just uh, just adds up, but um, yeah, you know I. It's uh, it, yeah. I got I got the message at I got my phone blow up at like four a.m. We, we like you said we got to bed really late with work and um you know obviously couldn't I uh, couldn't sleep after that and it still feels uh super super surreal and uh very numb. It's there's some sort of ending of the chapter. I know he hasn't played professional cricket in ages, mm. man. I I fucking got off on. Like the the Legends tour, where they like t- it took fifty blokes to like New York and LA and Houston. I think it was about three games, and I was watching Warm play at um, Yankee Stadium. <laughs> um, I'm still I'm still loving the shape of that, you know. But this is <laughs> this is it. You never get to see him bowl in a commercial to yeah. some nuffy. Ne- never get to hear him talk seriously about the game as well. There's there's a there's a sadness to that, but. It's um for all of us, I think anyway, and I will be speaking for all of us. Please, um, is that it's a part of our own lives, which 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 leaves when Shane leaves the earth as well, you know, because mm. that was what he gave us: the memories, the childhoods, the adulthood memories. Um, leaves with him as well. It's um it's a it's a terribly terribly sad day. Um, a lot of people are going to be devastated, and their lives will be altered forever from you know for for this. But um. I don't know. Unless there's anything else you want to say, Pez. I mean, I um, hope we've done our best there to uh, try and explain what it was like for us and I'm sure for a lot of you guys and girls out there as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, anything else, Pez? Um, there'll be more uh, – there's just going to be more reflections, you know. I mean, I'd be very surprised if our uh, – like our show on Monday will um, – Mm. Will be much else other Talking than about Azar Ali's hundred. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, yeah, <laughs> chanceless. You know, good hundred. Yeah, yeah good hundred. Yeah. Hates runs against us apparently. Um, mm. No, not really, mate. I just yeah, and thank you to all. Thank you to everybody who wrote messages, and um, we'll um, we'll find a way to get as many of them out there as possible, so that a lot of people see it and, and can share in the um, the feelings that we have for Shane Warne and. Um, uh, this will this this hits hard, and it'll go on for a little while, and it's gonna take you know because of who he was and what he meant to so many of us, regard you know, and at, at different ages that everyone experienced him, it's gonna take a little while to to process. Uh, reiterating that our first and foremost thoughts are with his friends and his family, especially, and uh, um, deepest condolences to them. And you know, we'll we'll do our absolute best to to celebrate this guy that you know, who, who brought something that really has directly and indirectly brought us here, I think, um, and, and yeah. has meant so much. So, um, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. I hope you got something out of it and, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be back with more worn stuff. <laughs> don't, don't worry about that <laughs> soon. <laughs> Beautifully said, Pez. Um, another great example of tell your friends you love them while you can. Mm. See you guys soon.